Hello and welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. My name is Art and we are exploring my bookshelves. Today I'm going to let an AI pick a top 10 Victorian book list. I know I shouldn't encourage them, but welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. And you know what? I just realized I'm wearing a Christmas t-shirt. Oh well, it's March. <laughs> it's close enough. <laughs> welcome back. I have seen a couple of channels doing things like, you know, they have an AI pick their TBR list or things of that nature. Um, and so I, I was kind of inspired by them. I, I did a, um, I used the, the chat GPT, I think it's called, and had the AI pick out the 10 best Victorian novels. And here's what it said. It said the Victorian era produced a wealth of literature, including some of the most enduring and popular novels in English literature. Here are 10 of the best Victorian novels. After reading this, you might wonder if, uh, you know, I cheated and just made out the list because, well, there's a couple of books by one of my favorite writers on there. So, but let's, let's see what it says. Um, we're just going to look through these right now. And it's actually not a bad list. You know, if, if it's not the 10 I would pick if you were to only read 10 novels or the 10 best novels, but uh, I, I think some of the ones... I would pick would be on here. Uh, anyway, so here's what they say. Number 10, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, a gripping mystery novel about a woman who is being forced into a marriage against her will and the conspiracy that surrounds her. And yeah, that's a fair, um, that's a, that's a fair understanding. And, th and that's a great one. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sure I would personally put it in the top 10, but that is a very good, uh, a, a very good classic. Uh, number nine is Dracula by Bram Stoker, a gothic horror novel about the infamous vampire Count Dracula and his attempts to spread his curse to Victorian England. So again, not a book I would put in my top 10, but it's another Victorian novel that I greatly enjoy. To be fair, I think all of my top 10 are probably Charles Dickens novels, so <laughs> there's that. Then number eight is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde which is a novel about a young man who becomes obsessed with his own beauty and youth, leading him down a dark and dangerous path. That makes it sound better than the book actually is, but uh, it's not bad. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it's not going to be one of my favorites. It is a, a novel, you know, I would recommend reading if you wanted to begin to be introduced to, um, to classics. I think it has some of the hallmarks of your classic Victorian novels, but it's it's shorter and it's a little easier to read, especially because it was written more towards the end of the 1800s, I believe. And so in that sense, it's a little easier to understand and, and it's good, but uh, not one I would, I would uh, put on my top 10 list. All right, then there's uh, Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. This is number seven and it's described as a tragic tale of a young woman's struggle against societal expectations and the constraints of her own fate. I guess that's what that was about. Sure. <laughs> no, I, I, I read it. It was tragic. You know, boy, this, this chat AI, he's getting so close to picking good ones. Not one of, not even one of my favorite Hardys. Uh, I think far from the maddening crowd is probably my favorite of his books. Number six is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens a novel about a young orphan boy who falls into a life of crime and poverty in Victorian London. Number six, though, I mean, it's good, but it's not that good. Um, so, so far, I'm not too impressed with the with the AI here and what they're choosing uh, for you to read for our top 10 list. Number five is Middlemarch by George Eliot, a multi-plot novel that explores the lives and ambitions of various characters in a fictional Midlands town. Um, yeah, that's, that's a pretty generic description doesn't have any spoilers in it so that's good i guess middlemarch was great it was a really good one not my favorite george Eliot though my favorite of her hers is silas marner um number four so we're expecting you know the top of the top of the top number four is vanity fair by william makepeace thackeray a satirical novel that follows the lives and fortunes of two young women in early 19th century england come on robot vanity fair Again, not not for me personally, not my top 10. You have some interesting um, reading tastes. And then number three, okay, 
the AI and I, we're going to box because at number three is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. It's described as a haunting tale of obsessive love and revenge set on the wild moors of Yorkshire. Okay, well, I don't think I would put this book in my top 10 list. Um, bonus points to the AI for getting, I think, a good description of the book. That it's a tale of obsessive love and revenge. It's not this tragic love story that some people, I mean, it, it it is in a sense, it has tragedy to it, but it's not like a Romeo and Juliet kind of story, which is what I thought it was at first. It, it is about obsessive love and two awful people falling in to, in, into love and it's about revenge. Um, uh, so well described, just not number three out of all of Victorian literature. I I'd, I'd fight that one. Number two is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, a classic gothic romance about a young governess who falls in love with her employer, the brooding Mr. Rochester. Okay, I would put this, I think I would put this one in my top 10, but top two, no, no, no. Just because I don't like Mr. Rochester, I really don't like his character. And I, I am liking him a little bit more the more I read the book. And, and I can kind of see that by the end of the story, um, minor spoiler alert, but by the end of the story, he's not the same man that he was at the beginning. I think he's changed. I think he's been redeemed a little bit, but I don't like the the kind of character that is mean and brooding and harsh towards, and, and the woman, you know, falls in love with them. I, I just, I don't like that kind of a plot. Pride and Prejudice maybe can get away with it because I think how I interpret Mr. Darcy and, and who he is, um, essentially, um, you know, anyway, on, only just, <laughs> only just. All right. So number one, the best Victorian novel, according to the chat, AI is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, uh, which is described as a coming of age story about an orphan boy who becomes a gentleman and struggles with his newfound status and the secrets of his past. Good description. Um, I, I swear I didn't I didn't pick that one. The the rope the the AI picked it all on his own. Not not so bad. You redeemed yourself a little bit. Again, I wouldn't personally pick Great Expectations as the best of Dickens's novels. I think it's probably top three, possibly even top two. Yeah, interesting choice for number one. I, and I think I think that makes a good number one novel because you know in some ways it's kind of a summary of what you would expect from a Victorian novel. You know, you've got the uh, kind of a coming of age story. You've got the poor orphan boy. You've got um, class struggles. You, you've you got, you know, dark secrets. I think that's a fair representation of Victorian literature. Just for fun, I asked for it to give me the top t 25 best Victorian novels. And for some reason, in those 25, the top 10 are different. Let me just go ahead and read you the, the their top 25 list. Uh, coming in at number 25, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 24, The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope, which I haven't actually read yet. 23, Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. 22, Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. Uh, I, I know some of you might disagree on that one. Uh, Kate, are you watching? <laughs> uh, as if AIs weren't suspicious enough, this this raises questions. Um, number 21 is The Pickbook Papers by Charles Dickens. 20 is Adam Bede by George Eliot. Number 19 is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Is That's not Victorian, though. That's that's a American, isn't it? Come on, there's plenty of good other books you could have used there. Anyway, number 18 is Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens. Number 17 is Dracula by Bram Stoker. Number 16 is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Number 15 is Daniel Deronda by George Eliot. Number 14 is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. Number 13 is Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Number 12 is Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. Number 11 is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Number 10 is Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Number 9 is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, well done. I would put her in the top 10. Uh, the Mill and the Floss by George Eliot is number 8. Number seven is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Number six is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Number five is Middlemarch by George Eliot. And then number four is Vanity Fair 
by William Makepeace Thackeray. Number three is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Number two is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And number one is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Okay, so it's weird that when I had it pick a longer list, it kind of changed the top 10 a little bit. And it looks like they've pretty, it pretty much just added in a ton of Dickens novels. So uh, maybe it does redeem itself a little bit. Plus with the addition of North and South being in the top 10, uh, I, I like this list a lot better. And, you know, and that's not a bad list to get you started if you want to know what are some of the best uh, Victorian novels. So that was interesting. I find artificial intelligence to be really intriguing. And I understand that, you know, the chat GPT, whatever it's called, isn't technically AI. You know, it's not like self-aware or anything. You know, I asked it and it said it wasn't. So I trust it. But it's been kind of fun. I've been kind of goofing around with it a little bit. Uh, I tried out some of the AI to try to make some pictures. You know, I wanted to get like a picture of Victorian people reading by a fireplace kind of kind of vibe and some um, spooky atmospheric pictures. And I, I thought it was pretty, it was interesting. It was really interesting. And then I've heard also that people are starting to use these to actually write stories and try to get it published and, and things like short stories and stuff. And it's at that point where I say, oh, hold on, let's not get so dependent on technology that we can't even think creatively for ourselves anymore. You know, that, that might be a, a, a pathway we don't want to go down. And, you know, that's my, that's my two cents on that. For any further questions about that, um, read the collected works of Ray Bradbury and you'll see what I mean. So, okay, that's your homework assignment. Uh, anyway, I thought this would be just kind of a fun video to do to uh, try out the, the AI and see what all the fuss is about and see if it can pick me a good Victorian TBR, uh, which, you know, I think looking at both lists kind of picking off here and there, I, I think it's a pretty decent list it came up with. Have you tried using this this AI chat thing? I sound like an old man talking about trying to describe a computer, but hey, you know, I am who I am. Let me know if you've played around with it at all and, and what you've been able to get it to do. I think it's kind of fun to play with, but don't let it replace your creativity, okay? That's, I'll get off my soapbox now. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching and just keep reading. Take care.